Agatha. Confession, I know an egregious amount about you. Been obsessed since I first showed up in your Salem days. That's why I saved you from the spell you were under. Slowly fanning on your feet. You're the only witch that's ever survived the witch's road. Who are you? I'm... Interesting. We need to assemble a coven to walk the road to get our powers back. The road will give you the thing you want the most if you make it to the end. Shall we? This journey. That's what death wish. Can we trust her? <laughs> Agatha. 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 The bodies are really piling up. We'll be safe as kittens. Okay. Agatha All Along, two episode premiere, September 18th, only on Disney+. Plus. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand, and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Hey, panelists. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. This is a spoilerful podcast about Agatha All Along, episodes one through four. And apologies to all you listeners for not getting this out to you sooner. I'm so sorry. <laughs> life got in the way, as we all do. Everybody has issues with family, work, life, things that happen. So um, it's been like that for the past few weeks. Obviously, Agatha All Along came out. We had one and two back to back. Then we got three, and then obviously episode four just came out. And then within this week, obviously, we're going to go into that and do one episode. I've, I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are here now with what you want to hear, which is our thoughts on the show. So I'm sure you've been listening to other people out there on their podcasts or YouTubes and their theories, their synopsis and their ideas and our radical views, but we're going to give you ours. And if you don't like them, fine, take them. And then just say, yeah, I'll just put that off to the <laughs> side. But if not, we're here for you and you, you can listen to us and just laugh about it because, you know, sometimes I just do like a once through and then a twice through for the, these episodes because I've been busy. So I've been like, okay, I'm casual viewer. I wasn't really writing 100% notes, but I've been writing some notes. But we do have some comic information regarding this. So with that, the synopsis for these episodes, Becky, and the titles. Yeah. <laughs> for episode one, we have Seekest Thou the Road mm -hmm. in a small, t small town in small town Westview. Detective Agnes's murder case sends her down a road that changes everything. Okay. Epis Are we going to go one by one? Uh, yeah, we'll go by one by one. But uh, okay. I found it interesting that it takes off right after WandaVision at that point and Agnes is still stuck in Westview. Yeah. In this little world. Uh episode two. Circle so with fate, unlock thy hidden gate. With old foes in hot pursuit, Agatha and Teen gather a desperate coven to walk the witch's road. Interesting. Like one. Yeah, it's really interesting. It it kind of like flows right in from the first episode, which mm -hmm. is the reason why they drop it one and two. And Disney has a tendency of doing that. So is like Amazon does that on occasion with their particular format, which is very good because we've gotten that with Sandman. If you guys follow the Sandman cast on podcast, go when Jamie and I do that or uh, the dead boy detectives, but it it's really, really cool when they do that. And then that way it just like grasps you and it's like, Oh, hold on. We gave you 40 minutes. We're going to give you another 40 minutes. <laughs> and we want you to really, suckle that which is teat and go <laughs> forward all right episode three through many miles of tricks and trials the coven faces their first perilous trial on the witch's road i like this one a lot too uh same here uh the fact that we actually do have a coven and we have a lot of information uh, a bit of information i shouldn't say a lot but there is some based upon comic stuff and we'll get that. And it's going to be a segment about comic book Easter eggs 
towards the end. So if you don't want to be spoiled and you're just a casual viewer, we will tell you, stop this podcast at that point and move forward another 50 minutes. And then we'll move forward with everything else. Episode four. If I can't reach you, let my song teach you. The coven faces their second trial on the witch's road and many surprise truths are revealed. I really loved this one. I love them all. The show surprised me so much. Oh, the the reason why I love this, it had like music in it, had like that whole 70s vibe to it. Disco, disco in a recording studio. And I love the flair in it. Those of you who have already probably watched it are going, wow, Mark, you're probably a metalhead. Yeah, I have a bald head now. I used to have long hair. I worked in recording studios. That's where I still I, want a picture of you with long hair. Oh, uh, uh, trust me. It's out there on the Z heads. You've seen it on uh, Jason Cabassi's uh, Patreon. Yeah, cheap plug for uh, Jason <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for uh, his Patreon. But uh, yeah, there are pictures of me with long hair. But. You'll see some eventually. It's pretty funny. Me with long blonde hair, light blue eyes, and all that stuff. It's pretty funny. But before we get into the episodes, let's get a quick rundown of some of the main characters within this, the, like the top cast. So uh, we know f- other people. We've seen them before in WandaVision, but we got some new ones here in the show. So let's move forward. So first up is Emma Caulfield. She's not necessarily a main character in Agatha all along, but I love her from Buffy. Mm -hmm. So I put her on here. Um, (laughs) She, I know her best from her role as the beloved vengeance demon on Yonka from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know she's been in several other things, but that is uh, my all time favorite role that she's played. And she plays in this one, Dottie. She's the neighbor and librarian, but she was, just a neighbor, I think, in WandaVision. Yeah, she was. That's okay. all she played in that. And she played one of the upper class style, prom two kind of like characters. But just like you, I did. Uh, I, I love her characterization in Buffy the Vampire Slayer as Anya or Nyaka, uh, who is a, a former vengeance demon who loses her power, marries Xander, and then takes her power back and at the very oh no spoilers everybody on that she's one. afraid of bunnies yeah and she's afraid of bunnies which is <laughs> hilarious on every halloween she dresses as her favorite scary thing which is a bunny in one of the episodes oh, it's so hilarious good. i just love emma caulfield she's got such a cool quick wit we also know her from 90210 as well oh she, that's right she played uh something in the press at the high school for yeah, Brandon. She worked with Brandon and then he was she was some sort of love interest so uh there's a lot of love for Emma Caulfield here uh I hope you guys really enjoy it and uh she also did there was a uh Buffy uh, I'm not gonna say radio drama that came out recently oh, it was uh, kind of like an audio yeah it was an audio book that was out there that they did they've done it unofficially but they've taken it down unfortunately it was like an alternate universe of Buffy. And uh, yeah, if Cordelia was a vampire slayer, yeah, well, she was in this one. And uh, we got Giles. We got Spike back alive. It was really cool. So it was pretty cool. So those of you who are Buffy fans, obviously, do, go check it out. If you want to get more information, go to podcastka.com. And go to the Buffyverse podcast with Penny and Kara. Kara. And uh, yeah, they're was, amazing. They, they're amazing. It was fun. They do mention that and they actually do talk about that. All right. On to the show again. I'm sorry we digressed. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh. Next up would be Catherine Hahn, who plays Agatha Harkness. Well known for playing the same character in WandaVision and also killed it in a drama show called Tiny Beautiful Things. Uh, she's also been around for years and movies and other, you know, interesting movies like that. Um, she's always been on my radar and uh, I just love just her characterization of of particular characters, of how she's able to play them, whether it be dramatic, comedic or uh 
even horrific at this point too because sometimes she is horrific in this yeah i'm not saying in horrific in her acting i'm saying horrific and insane how evil she could be everybody so all right next up aubrey plaza playing rio is it vidal or vidal i like to say vidal i do too like vidal sassoon yeah um I can't show my that. age, aren't I? Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, first took note of her playing April Ludgate on yep. Parks and Recre- Recreation. And she also has a stellar role in the well loved second season of White Lotus. I have yet to watch Light Lotus. I actually have to sit down and do that. You'll enjoy it when you do. I, I had recommended it. Uh, my, my sister's birthday was this. This past weekend, we celebrated on Happy Sunday. Happy birthday. Yeah, she's 59. And uh, we, we were sitting around this Mexican restaurant, and um, the Egyptian owner, an Egyptian owning a Mexican restaurant, uh, we were talking about, he goes, oh, I like this episode. I like this show. I was like, oh, he's getting involved in the conversation. And they're like, oh, my my mother's like, my son's a podcaster. He does all She goes, but he doesn't do stuff I like. thanks mom well mom's more into like historic stuff and things of that nature but go figure she's into outlander and stuff like that which my mom loves outlander too yeah but it's there's historic stuff in it like i said we digress but uh i i said what i mentioned white lotus is something that i was interested in uh, I mentioned that too, and this is a cheap plug for uh, what we're doing on Adrenaline and Cinema Podcast because Billy Spaulding will be actually covering Kevin Can F himself <laughs> on so Adrenaline. So good. So he'll be covering that on Adrenaline and Cinema Podcast. It's going to be a kind of a spinoff. Hopefully, we can move that into the Pirate Core Entertainment Podcast. I'm going to see what I could do before we actually launch that. It's something that I have to add on as another podcast because we're trying to branch out, get you more material out there for Pirate Car Entertainment. But uh, I've always loved Aubrey Plaza. I just love her comedic wit, and she's been doing a lot more. She looked very different in this. I hardly recognized her at certain point. This uh, for this last episode, when yeah. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And I, I didn't realize it was her at one point, and I, I was like, "Wait, is that over Plaza? Is it not?" Is it? <laughs> I was like, "I had no clue." Uh, she's beautiful. She's very strong, and it's a different character in comparison. Yes, it might be slightly evil, and how her characters are usually comedic, but she's killing it. She's killing it. In this. Um, she could also be seen in Legion. Which is an oh, Legion is a Marvel based uh, character, Professor X's son, who's crazy. And they did that on, I'm forgetting, it might have been TNT or sci fi at one point, but a very interesting, uh, and it was done in the comics, everybody, as you know, and it was adapted. And Aubrey Plaza played a character in the psych ward with the character Legion in that. So I thought. That's pretty cool. So check that out. Uh, also covered on podcast. Uh, it's called the Legion cast. So Jason Cabasi actually does that with a bunch of people. I think Rima and a few other people. So if you're interested and you could still see it, you get it on streaming, check it out and then follow their podcast. Cheap plugs for my friends, everybody. Cool. Anyhow, we'll move on to the next one. Oh, one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, Deborah Jo Rupp. <sighs> Mrs. Hart. Mrs. Hart. Uh, best known for her role as Kitty in that 70s shows, as well as that 90s show, which unfortunately. Oh, yeah. unfortunately I have seen the new season. It was canceled. That 90s show was canceled after this last season. So it only got two seasons, everybody. But you could see a friendly voice that was on the podcast, somebody who I interviewed once, that one and only that Kevin Smith. He was on there as well with Jason Muse playing Cheech. Uh, no, Tommy Chong's keeps I was going to say Cheech Marin. No, Tommy Chong's son <laughs> in it, um, taking over the family business of like uh, selling weed in the 90s. Love but, it. Which is interesting. But next up, 
Next up is Sashir Zamata, who plays Jennifer Kale. Yeah. Uh, I recognized her from a very funny sitcom that was canceled way too soon called Home Economics. Uh, I think you can catch it streaming on Hulu or Netflix, but it's uh, about a family siblings that grow up or that live in San Francisco. And one is super rich. One is uh, mm-hmm. like the dorky brother with the wife and kids. And then she plays uh, a lady who's got um, a wife and they have two kids and it's, it, it was so funny. And then they just, it just disappeared. So. Huh. Yeah. The, the, sometimes that happens. They get these shows and they last maybe half a season. Or ABC maybe one, is the worst one season. Yeah. And you're like, what happened to that? That's like that <laughs> 80 show. That 80 show only that. lasted three episodes. Um, Zombieland had only one episode on Amazon Prime. Did you ever know about that one? No. Uh, is, is the one episode still up? No. Oh, man. But I do hold a copy, which you That's cannot find. That's my boy. <laughs> so I have a way of finding things and having them stored on a drive so that I can watch them at any given time because I like to have that stuff because it's fun. I'd like to see that. All right. Uh, next up, Ali An, who plays Alice Wu Gulliver. And Ali An is uh, an American actress. She has appeared in TV series such as Billions, Orange is the New Black. That's probably where I saw her because I was mm-hmm. a big fan of that show. Um, Raising Dion and The Diplomat. And I've heard of The Diplomat. It's good. Next up, we've got Patty Lapone playing Lilia Caldera. Okay. Uh, most everybody probably knows her from Broadway. She's had a pretty epic Broadway career. Um, but on the smaller screen, uh, and this, thank you, Wikipedia, for this fancy sounding sentence I'm about to say. She lent her assertive presence in recurring fashion with 30 Rock. American Horror Story in 2011, and Penny Dreadful in 2014. She is brilliant. Wow. Yeah, she's very talented. Good range. Good range, yeah. Uh, Next up would be Joe Locke, who plays the teen. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) So he is known for his lead role as high school student Charlie Spring in the Netflix teen series Heartstopper. He looks familiar uh, to me, but I've probably seen him in cameo appearances in other films. Or yeah, shows. I was um, scrolling through Netflix last night. I've been watching uh, uh, reruns of Brooklyn Nine Nine before I go to sleep. You too. And this, <laughs> I love that show. Nine Nine. Uh, and this uh, Heartstopper popped up as something I might like. So, and I was like, "Oh, I know him." So I may give it a huh. shot. Awesome. Cool. These are things to look out for too, because we know it's a, it's like a, a TV show wasteland out there. Mm-hmm. There's like new product that's out there that we do like and some we don't like. But me, and we'll talk about it later. I, I've been delving into older stuff that I never got into, like Brooklyn Nine Nine. I didn't get into a, I would say about until like eight months ago. Really? Yeah, and then I bought the whole series on iTunes. So I kind of binged watch it throughout the during the winter months. So yeah, I wake up to it, me go up. to bed and wake up to it and be like, okay, let's go. I'm like, oh my god. It's like, I, I you know, uh, we, we talked about the Zed Heads and Jason's Patreon for podcast. Uh, but uh, I kind of wrecked that they just had a, a whole getaway this past weekend in, in Galveston, Texas, which is awesome. And I wish I could have been there. I couldn't afford it this year. But my heart goes out to them and loved seeing the pictures. But I kind of recommended something for next year if I do actually show. And I said, let's do a Halloween heist because we always do this and center it around Halloween in October at times. Yeah, it would be funny if we had a Halloween heist at an Airbnb and somebody coming up with something. (laughs) Oh, that would be so much fun. So we'll figure that one out. But yeah, Brooklyn nine, nine is like, uh, is my go-to very much almost like the office Mm -hmm. and parks and rec 
and uh, the Big Bang Theory and Friends for me. Yeah, I, I just go to, ones. I gravitate just for something to throw on in the background that you know. And, you know, uh, honestly, you know, everybody says it, and even my niece said it. She goes, it's not PC to watch Friends. And then, you know, she was born in the early 2000s, but she's catching up with it. And she goes, I really love uh, Paul Rudd and uh, Lisa Kudrow and their oh, characters yeah. together. So she goes, they were voted the best couple. I was like, really? <laughs> I was what like, is it? Um, what is it? She changed it. Princess Consuela. Banana, Banana hammock. hammock. And then he changes his name to Crap Bags. Yep. <laughs> I joked with my husband about doing that when we got married. Like, I'm just going to change my name to something random. I'll say crap bag. Yes. And when she found out what a banana hammock was, she had to change it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We kind of digressed again, but again. we're going to get, get back on course, everybody. Stay on target. Stay on target. <laughs> like Borkin says, or one of the guys from Star Wars. Anyhow, we're going to move right into first impression of the show as a whole. So we've gotten four episodes, Becky. Uh, we've watched all of them completely. I've watched them twice each. Mm-hmm, you probably watched them a few more or taken more notes. Uh, but have what was your overall thought? What was your anticipation for the show? What did your thoughts as you were getting into it? And what was your overall outcome after these four episodes? Well, I peaked, my interest was peaked on this when uh, Catherine Hahn was on Good Morning America and she was talking about the the show. Mm -hmm. And I did not put two and two together that she was, this was related to WandaVision. And (laughs) then you had mentioned it and I was like, yeah, I want to watch that. So going into it, I was just, it was just something that I was like, yeah, I'll check this out, see what it's about. And then by the end of episode one, I was like, this is one of the coolest television shows I've ever seen. The visuals, the storyline, you got humor, you got mystery. The cast is amazing as we just listed a few of them yeah uh i understand more than i thought i would i'm not a big marvel fan so i don't i haven't seen every movie i don't know every (laughs) every detail so i was worried once i realized that you know this was a part of the you know wandavision and all kinds of other stuff i was like oh am i going to be able to keep up but i can and Mm -hmm. uh it's you know it was the, it is the perfect follow-up to WandaVision. I love it. What about you? Uh, well, the funny thing is, is that the way you brought it up, the fact that you didn't really follow along too much until you watched those movies. And it's a credit to Disney and Marvel and how they're able to make it and get people captured into it mm-hmm. because of that. Uh, it, there, Yes, there is the legacy, but they could go. People could jump into the episode. And they kind of allude to a previous show and they mentioned Wanda and they're like, oh, wait, Wanda was in Marvel. Oh, she had a show. Oh, we should go back to that show. But this is another sequence. And that's what's pretty cool about it. I think that people could jump into it at any given time and then say, oh, well, I'll reference that and yeah. I'll go back to that. And then they could go back to it and go, oh, wow, I want more. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I like that if you don't know a lot a you can if 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 you see something that you don't understand you know i googled a few times just to get a connection um but i not knowing not having seen the most recent doctor strange that apparently relates to this and whatnot i don't feel left out and i think that caters to brings in a whole new demographic of people and now i will go back and watch a lot of the Marvel movies that relate to her and Wanda and so on and so on. So it's, it's a, yeah, they, they've done a great job. They do a great job in comparison to what we covered recently on Eternal and Cinema podcast, Mayfair Witches, Oh, (laughs) which oddly (laughs) enough, uh, you'll laugh at this Becky, uh, when we were talking, when I was talking to, and I was working through with, uh, Billy about doing Kevin can F himself for Adrenaline cinema. 
uh, just a side note, everybody, which is pretty funny. Uh, we, we, we got into a whole discussion about true blood. Oh my gosh. And we got into this whole talk about true blood and everything else. Uh, at one point I was in the process of talking with Deborah and wall, trying to get her on the podcast, but, with everything that was going on with Daredevil Reborn. Yes, everybody, we're going to be covering that. And yes, I'm going to have to go back and try to get Deborah back. Because <laughs> now, if you're listening. Uh, now the uh, embargo should be over once the show comes out. I'm going to reach out yet again to her and her publicist and see if I could get that interview. She's a lovely woman, great podcaster as well. So if you are into True Blood, Check that out. It's on HBO Max or Max, the Max app. You could get it. They have the podcast on the Max app as well, which is called The Truest Blood. And it goes episodically. Her and Kristen Bauer cover each episode and get people from the show on as guests. And they talk about certain things within certain episodes. And it's pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah, we got into the whole thing about uh, the the Truest Blood podcast, as well as uh, talking about the show and what we loved. And it just makes me laugh how, uh, you know, uh, during the pandemic that a lot of actors became podcasters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like I, I've made a joke about it because to Pat Oswalt and his wife, uh, Meredith Salinger, <laughs> saying it's like, great. We've been doing this for years, and you guys come out of the blue and you start taking mm. out our listeners. <laughs> but they honestly, they, they didn't really take our listeners. They they literally just embraced their celebrity and are, have a voice and figured out, hey, we could do this. Yeah, and I they, like the office ladies. The office ladies were amazing. They came out during that time as well. Same thing with Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, John Bernthal has done the same thing thing because when i spoke to him at a online convention and i mentioned panels to pixels podcast he wanted to be on but well he got too busy guess why because he was doing his own podcast at a certain point and he is doing very inclusive things very much like inside of you with michael rosenbaum is very in-depth and very cool uh, John Berthel goes into serious steps with actors and their life and everything else revolving around acting, their experiences and who they are. So I, I, it's like a good, you know, this is pretty much a good praise to them. Mm-hmm. But I embrace the idea of anybody doing a podcast, getting out there and being um, pretty much creative in any respect. Obviously, we want to move forward, give you more video, give you more interviews do more things and have fun with that. And like I said, I will be reaching out to Deborah and wall again, not Perfect. to, not to plug another Marvel quality, but obviously <laughs> we will be back doing daredevil reborn. Can't wait. It was like Deadpool Wolverine. We had to do it. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, my first impression of the show. Amazing. I love the show. I was anticipating it. Uh, it's something that we've been anticipating since WandaVision went off the air because it was uh, told at a D23 event in Disney. And we should have been, we, we were like, when is it coming? Is it coming? And we finally got it. Finally got it. Yeah. And uh, it started off very interesting. Because it was like, what is going on? Smoke and mirrors and some sort of spell. So I was like, okay, yep, this is casual. This is like typical Marvel humor. Marvel, not Disney, everybody. This is how Marvel writes at times in comics. So I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. And they did allude to something with Wanda in the first episode, which we will get into. But um, overall, I love the humor. The acting, the seriousness of it at times, the elusiveness for us to play, uh, you know, uh, public detectives, Mm -hmm. as it were, in our own right, as we watch the show and try to figure it out. What's going on? Who is this? Is this Wanda's son, Wiccan, from the comics or from WandaVision? Or is it Agatha's dead son that she sacrificed 
I or have my theories. Is it the young Quicksilver? <laughs> Who knows? We have no clue. The plot thickens as we get to, and we will discuss these things as we go through, and uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm overly satisfied with the show. It makes me want to tune in, makes me want to watch it, and intrigue going. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, you get all the cool stuff with the witches stuff at the very end. Yeah, the credits. There's some neat stuff in there. It is. And, you know, they showed Wizard of Oz. They show... Stuff from Bewitched. Disney, early Disney stuff, you know, the Halloween stuff that they had in Disney. Uh, there's so many things that you could go through and just look at and just appreciate. Now, if those of you who are fans like me of Halloween, we're in that, that month, everybody. It's my favorite time of the year. I'm not a big Christmas fan, but I'm a huge Halloween fan. So by the end of August... All the way till November coming fire. And yes, I just referenced a Samhain song from Danzig. Sam Hain, for those you layman people out there. Anyhow, uh, yeah, I, it's all the way from like the end of August all the way till uh, the end of November for me. So uh, November coming fire is coming. And uh, we do have Halloween in between, and we will be doing prepping more for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast because, well, we have to do horror stuff based on that on that particular podcast. And if you want to be part of that, let us know, and we will talk to you about that at the end. But we have this show, and apparently, it. <laughs> Mayfair, and apparently Mayfair witches too. But I we, swear we're going to finish this. Uh, yeah, we will. Uh, we're only 30 minutes in. Come on. It, it's not really much. I only have a few breaking points in between per episode. So we're not oh, going to go got really so too. many. Oh, uh, so you're going to be the talker. In this I'm going to be the. Yeah. What okay. should not surprise you, given that. That's just what I do. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But anyhow, I'm overly satisfied. I'm happy and I love to tune in. Perfect. So, all right. So let's get into specific show moments and we could start with episode one. Becky. My first thing, it took me, took me a minute, but then when I, cause I was like, what the heck is going on? And then it dawned on me, they were doing the most epic parody of the mayor of East town, uh, which is a phenomenal show. If you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. Uh, and then later on, when she's coming out of her, out of the spell and the neighbor's like, well, you have been on a bit of a true crime phase uh, lately. <laughs> I, that, that alone, I was like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen, but this show is worth it because of that right there. Well, the the fact of the spell, if you look at it, she goes in and out of black and white to different colors to different scenes, very much like in WandaVision. Mm -hmm. When she realized, and it comes to that rationalization, when we first meet her, she's a detective, Agatha Harkness. Now, mind you, before she was just the hi, neighbor, <laughs> next door person to Wanda. And now she's there and she's investigating a death mm -hmm. and a death of somebody that we know, which is very odd because it has a toe tag with wanda maximoff's name on it and it mm -hmm. kind of disappears so it, it it's like overshadowing because this i and the first thing i thought was okay this is the overlapping spell that wanda put on westview at that point that included agatha but how strong is this spell but as we all know everybody wanda was in the in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as in WandaVision, was not necessarily a true, true witch. She was mutated witch. So, and then there's like that legacy within WandaVision where they actually say she is a true witch because she used rune magic and all that good stuff at the very end of that particular show. So maybe she's a truest form. Who knows? Uh, will we see her at the end of this season? 
it would be amazing to see a resurrection of Wanda Maximoff coming back as the Scarlet Witch and uh, taking her presence to get there to Secret Wars. Be amazing. But within the show itself, it, I'm I'm awaiting to see more. But uh, I love the the nods to the fact of WandaVision. We got that Agnes where she was. She was under a spell. And then she's trying to break it. And then she broke that spell and got out of it. But we do get a new person, which is Vidal. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and it's very dark, gloomy, the character, sardonic in some way. And it makes me think there's a little bit of evilness behind this. <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, when she literally busts into the scene, uh, as a, fellow detective and then when she reveals her true self it the chemistry between her and agatha also is like oh okay something's happened here i don't know what it is but i'm really excited about it which was just another really amazing moment of how they just keep reeling you in to where you really want to see the next scene or you really want to make sure you catch the next episode and talking about, you know, keeping you in, you know, I, I walked away from that episode with, you know, is that Wanda? Uh, Why were all the books burnt? What exactly is the dark hole? (laughs) Um, That's why she went back and said, I got to (laughs) watch. <laughs> Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Note to self. Um, but then uh you know, when she realizes that, you know, she's under the spell and, and Rio's like, you know, claw out of there, and she's literally, like you said, peeling off all of these layers, but it's you know, I recognize the eighties. I recognize the black and white from yeah. WandaVision. Mm-hmm. And uh and then in the middle of this beautiful, intense scene, you know, she's wearing pants that say naughty, uh, in sparkles on her butt. And I'm just like, that's I just I I laughed out loud and then I'm right <laughs> back into the intensity and severity, you know, severeness of the moment. So yeah. It, it was, but the way Catherine Hahn can just, just like, just like that change from funny to mean, to caring, to seriousness, pained. it's just yeah. a, her range, but the way she can do it all in one scene is, it's absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. It's very creative from uh, an acting standpoint. Um, if they did cuts, that would be interesting. But uh, it looked to me it was very fluid. It looked like it. So uh, it to me that that shows the presence of somebody who knows what they're doing and knows the character, and knows what the character is transforming into. So uh, I really do enjoy that, and that's why uh, you know Catherine Hahn's really very talented. Uh, All Plaza, obviously manipulative within this but like i said a little bit more evil in the in or dark in the character that she she normally plays i like it though yeah but this this also starts her um her journey with agatha too agatha Mm -hmm. starts her journey to find uh you know because uh they, they also have somebody else new a teen there that they're interrogating I believe in the first episode. Yeah, he uh no, it's this it is the first one where yeah, yeah. she catches him breaking in correct to her son's room and she goes, Well what we assume is her son's room, we don't know because this is all a spell. Mm-hmm. Um Yes. But then yeah, she chases after him and uh I thought it was interesting when he got hit by uh Mrs. Hart and Agnes at the time doesn't re- doesn't even seem to realize who she is. 
So it just goes, adds more to deepen the, you know, realness of the spell that she's under. Yeah. Yeah. It's the plot opens up a little bit more Yeah, uh, of her world because she's coming out of the spell that Wanda had put over Westview. And I think a lot of the other people are feeling that same way as well, because <clears throat> well, they're yeah. out. They're out of it. Um, yeah. But they're trying to adapt and move on. But Agnes still seemed to be because it was the last spell that Wanda put on Agnes herself mm-hmm. specifically. If we remember, if you go back listeners to and watch the last episode of WandaVision, she specifically traps Agnes in that world as said character. But apparently that character did change because she became a detective and everybody, and you stated it before Becky, that they, they were saying, well, you were this at one day and then now you're a detective this day. Yeah, like said, so they adapt to try to keep her. Yeah, entertained. Yeah, or, <laughs> from being crazier than you know. And when she busted out of the house naked, and oh is, yeah, <laughs> just I again, I already I, I say this a lot with shows. I think I said it with uh, several characters on uh, interview, but give her all the Emmys because. Uh, she's bringing it. Um, wow, yeah, she, yeah, honestly, the one is beautiful, and you know, God bless her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Herb was just like, uh, I don't know, I can't, I have to look at you in the eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he is so calm, and you know, cat, and then the uh, the guy that was running down the street. And then he sees her naked and he just starts running backwards. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And then the sheriff of the police station or whatever, her boss is, you know, Dottie is dragging him back in the house. He's like, I'm not looking, but he's obviously (laughs) looking. I was anyway. Oh my God. That was a good first episode. I didn't know which had a third nipple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it magical? Uh, anyhow, bad jokes. The nubbin. The nubbin. Yeah, that's something out of Friends, by the way. I'm look so up glad Ch- you got that. G- uh, look up Chandler Bang. God rest uh, Matthew Perry's soul. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I think we can move into episode two because this kind of leads into it. Because yes, this is where she tries to find where she has to go from there. And uh, she she's trying to find her path, but she like literally runs to the teen that's there. Well, she, you know she's she's running around the house, ranting, realizing, mm-hmm. you know, having just discovered that for three years she's you know been, been in the, under the spell and has been going around and been oh darn. I've been living this really weird fantasy world and I haven't been myself. Yeah, and to watch her, you know, go through the anger, frustration, confusion, mm-hmm. and then, you know, the teen, I, I love the way he hopped around that whole house and she did not once bother to untie him. Uh, it just <laughs> made for such a, a very comical scene, but he ended up, she does need him and she realizes that she needs him. But I Mm -hmm. also think in some way in her heart, she already has a soft spot for him. I just don't think she realizes why. Which points me to the question is because she found him where in her son's bedroom, quote unquote. When he broke in. Yeah. When he broke in, which makes me think it's like, well, and then, this is where we get into really spoilers of it, but obviously you guys have listened to others. You've been watching. You already have questions of your own. My question is, is, uh, is this remnants of Wanda? Like I mentioned before, is this Wiccan from Wanda's world that became like that 
did Wiccan's uh, soul empower this child in Westview and then take possession of it now as like a teen. And uh, he was trying to get answers because Agnes was close to her mother for the fact that she is a witch mm-hmm. or is this uh, and it made me think it's like, is this her son? Because he wants to go to the witch's road, which is where you would find something that is true to yourself or true to your heart. Mm-hmm. And is if that were the case, he already found his mother. If he is her son or is he Wiccan and he's using Agnes to find his mother, Wanda, whose soul is still alive somewhere. Yeah. And they're going down the witch's road so he could meet her, get his mother back. But uh, I, I would love to see quick come back as well too, which is his brother, his twin brother. So you got Wiccan and quick. I might be getting that wrong name wrong, but that I'm just saying you got two boys <clears throat> Wiccan very much like Wanda and then quick. Who's very much like guess who everybody Wanda's twin brother <laughs> who has the speed, the zipster himself. Um, anyhow, but it makes me think I'm like, which, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I same, same thing. I, I have like two sections. I've got just notes on, fun stuff or stuff that I enjoyed in the episode, not always fun, yeah. but, and then I've got a set of questions that I've had for the end of each episode. And mm-hmm. um, one of those is first, you know, whose brooch is that? Whose hair is in it? Uh, mm-hmm. And then was when they passed, when her and teen were leaving to go find the coven, was that Wanda's house that had been destroyed? Yes. Okay. And then um, I'm dying to know about her coven and what happened to them. And spoiler alert, I think based on the conversation that happens in episode four, mm-hmm. she killed them all on the witch's road. Yeah. Um because she is not to be trusted. Not one bit. <laughs> not one bit at all. I agree. Um, Agatha will be there for Agatha only. Mm-hmm. And you could tell that too, exactly from the fact that, you know, from the history of it, Agatha had to kill her own son at one point. As we know. She had to or she chose to. I don't think she had to. I think she chose to do it for power. Yeah. So I'm wondering. Or so if, we're made to believe. I'm wondering by the end of this season if if this is Wiccan, which is Wanda's son, it's her redemption arc of helping Wanda come back and embracing and creating a new coven with Wanda. Or it's her son and it's her way of redemption of like an, I'm sorry, I did this to you and then taking him under her wing and then, and or redemption in the sense of like saying, I'm sorry. And then moving on and being a good witch. I don't think she's Glenda. I still think she's the wicked witch. of the (laughs) (laughs) She's definitely wicked. Um, I a uh, few few other notes. I love her comedic acting when she goes in and plays the Southern lady to get uh, Lilia to be a part of their coven. <laughs> um, I love how ready Teen is for whatever it is that she, what what she needs to happen to convince these other witches to come along. He's just always at the ready. And it, it just adds to my theory that he is a part of her and Mm -hmm. he just, they, they just think he just knows. And I, I like that. That, That's why it made me think that that's an essence of her. And that would be her son. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, 
I'm torn in half at this point. I'm like, yeah. I really don't know where to go. I'm st- I'm laying on I am laying on the sword that which we'll get to later, but that's yeah. her kid. Um the I love the coat that she's wearing when she comes out of the house and sees the the crow and the wolf. I think it's a wolf. Yes. And uh she looked stunning in that coat. Um I thought it was hilarious when the uh Salem when the everyone shows up and he's trying to be all serious and with his welcome sign and he's like, What do you think? And she's like, Oh, let's just move it a little over and then she just rips it down and just I love the her like I said, the way she can transform into one, you know, saying one thing one way and then at the drop of a hat, she's back to being sarcastic, mean Agatha. The ballad, <laughs> what did you think about the ballad? I thought that was beautiful. It gave me serious uh, Hocus Pocus vibes. It did. Uh, it was the chanting and everything that they needed to do. Um but uh, to me, it was the gathering of the witches to, together of the coven within the episode itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, between uh, Lilia Calderu, uh, definitely Jennifer Kale, and of course, Jennifer being like a who, who's been running a bogus wellness shop yeah. <laughs> rife with legal issues since she was out, ousted from the witch community. And they get them to join her their quest, and then um, and it's so funny how she tries to shrug off the teen again, but he pleads with her, and he shows his point of why she needs him. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time she asks him his name, but when he tries to answer, his mouth is over always covered by a sigil like an M. Yeah, that was and, wicked. Which. It always hides his words and muffles them. It's an M. But what is an M upside down? A W. I mean, it, it, everybody, is, everybody is like torn at this and everybody I've spoken to about this, like whether at work or I, I brought it up to my brother and he goes, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're, you're reading way too much into stuff. No. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, if, even if it's, I think if it's a W or an M, it works because of her name. Her name is Wanda Maximoff. Mm -hmm. So it could be her either way. But Who hexed uh, him? Who hexed him? Yeah, yes, who put the sigil on him. And I like her response, which we'll get to when we get to episode four, uh, when he asks her about the sigil. Um, I thought that was telling. Uh, But that's really cool special effects, the way they make that look. And it looks natural. It looks real like it's it's not makeup or anything. uh, House on Haunted Hill, to me, a little bit, if you ever watched that show. Is that the series of books? It's a Netflix show, House on Haunted Hill. Is it like the same characters or same actors? In several different, yeah. Okay, yes, I have yeah, seen that. Yeah, had Henry Thomas in it and a whole bunch of people in it. Yeah, uh, those yeah. are good. My uh, my son, he's not my biological son, but he's my boy. He got he <laughs> talked me into watching those and reading the books. Uh, speaking of horrifying, uh, the Salem Seven. Oh my gosh, when they <laughs> busted with the one busted through the window in the. Other one was coming freakily down the stairs. Oh yeah, I that sc- that scared me. That uh, well, that's after the witches have created their own coven and decided to gather together, and they're going down the spiral yeah. staircase to get to the witches' road because they figured out where it is and how to get to it, and they opened it up and they have to go. And but I before- thought, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. They, that's how they were like uh, Agatha and you know, the witches getting together. Uh, we we kind of overspoke about Alice Wu Gulliver or Ali Hans Alice Wu. Well, how Gulliver. they get her from the yeah. topic? 
<laughs> yeah, of all things, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, who you know, who is rumored to have been lost like her mother was has, was rumored to have been lost on the witch's road. She mm-hmm. she was dead. Uh so, you know, it's like Agatha has like assembled her own core witches or coven together with the teen at this point. And yeah, they they're like trying to get away from these the uh, what what did they call them in Harry Potter? Oh, was it the Deathly Hollows where it's like they, uh, Dementor? Oh yeah, I made it reminded me of the Dementors. Very. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah, just to, to give you an idea, I'm I'm not a, a Potterhead. Same. But, I've but seen them, but that's I, it. I watched all the movies. I never really read the books, but I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. It, to me, it just reminded me of that. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I, I, I can see that. It's a good, good comparison. Uh, I thought it was telling when the door didn't immediately open, which I think she knew it wasn't going to mm-hmm. because she was trying to rile them all up mm-hmm. to get her to to get them to fire on her so she could take their powers uh because if you don't know that's how she gets powers is when people use them on her she absorbs them and uh they caught on to it and realized that she's being a scumbag and they didn't they didn't do it (laughs) so that was good um reminds me of something out of uh what we do in the shadows where you have (laughs) <laughs> the energy uh Colin. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and did uh in the episode where there was the the one his they dated for like a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh she was the sympathy. Yep. Oh. Yeah, it's an energy draining vampire, everybody. That's what I'm referencing. <laughs> Colin. I, love Colin. I forgot I forgot his last name, but it's like they would always say it in his full name. Can't wait for that to come out. It's gonna probably be out by the end of the october going into it and you know that uh the guy that plays colin played nate on the office yes i do <laughs> i didn't realize that until i was going back and watching the office reruns i was like oh my gosh it's colin robinson it is colin robinson but the funny yeah. thing is is that you know you see characters and actors in other places that you would never think of them before. Yeah. Very much like how, where I used to live in Staten Island, New York, and that's where what we do in the shadows is <laughs> supposedly the set of, <laughs> and I'm like, Oh yeah. The, yeah. Staten Island does suck the life out of you. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was born there, raised there, lived there the first twenty eight years of my life, but it does suck the life out of you. Nice. <laughs> I mean oh, yeah. not nice that it sucks life out of you, but eh, but I still love the people that I that I grew up with and <laughs> I have my family and stuff, but uh I haven't been there in a long time. But anyhow, back to this. Uh so we get the coven together which is Agatha's coven. Mm -hmm. They're going through, they're going, trying to get to the witch's road. And it pretty much the episode ends as they're traveling down the stair spiral staircase to get away from the seven. And that's where they lead us. And they leave us at for this particular episode, I believe. Yeah. I love the visuals. Uh, when they they're going down the stairs, but I like how they separate it, how each person makes that choice one at a time. Yes. Starting with teen. Who's like, uh, uh-uh, I'm out of here after the seven, uh, busted the house and, and they all follow. Um, I thought that was really cool visuals and it, the whole road, the stairs mm-hmm. made me think of wizard of Oz. I feel like this, the whole show is full of Wizard of Oz references. I don't understand though, and maybe you can shed some light. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the scene where they took their shoes off and it ends as they're walking away, but why did they take their shoes off? Was that significant? I do not know, but I think it's a significant thing within which lore that uh, any witches that are there have to feel the earth. 
Oh. Within their body, so they're feeling the earth because that's where they draw their power from. <clears throat> and it's uh it's a witch kind of thing. So they're always barefoot. And from here on out throughout the the next two episodes, they are barefoot, everybody. For except certain scenes where they're dolled up and dressed up. I don't know if you caught that or realized that, but that. Oh yeah, I'm. It's. I got that in my notes, and I think I know, I know the TV show they were yeah. doing the pair together on the. I'm a. I'm a very second te- episode tenderfoot, so I would be the worst <laughs> mo- warlock known to man because I would be like ow ow ow, <laughs> walking on the you know. I have really flat feet, so I feel everything and Ooh, everything. Yeah. I, I would not be in the military. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm the opposite. I seldom have shoes on. Um, so I, th- I think I'd do okay. But uh, yeah, and also, I, I people have always said that that's like a sensual thing for women. But then again, if you look at the teen, he's a male. And he is barefoot as well. Yeah. So I, I think it has to do with uh, because he wanted to be a witch. He wanted to be kind of like a warlock. He is embracing that attitude and that feel mm-hmm. because he wants Agatha to train him and and show him and also get to where he needs to go. And I think uh, that's part of it. And that's why I still think Wiccan, Wiccan. <laughs> yeah. So. But uh, if you watch it, it, it's very much that it's like a, a whole thing, especially with the ickiness of like the swampy stuff that we get into, especially in episode three, mm-hmm. because we do get to see uh, Deborah Joe, uh, Deborah Joe Rupp uh, get sloppily stuck somewhere <laughs> <with her feet laughs> at one point, And she kind of like strays off the path. It's almost like in Labyrinth when you went off the path and you went the wrong way and you go waiting for the Goblin King to come after you. Uh. <laughs> Something would get you. Yep. Uh, but yeah, like uh, you were saying in episode three, uh, things pick up right where we left off. Uh, the coven departs down the witch's road with no idea what lies ahead at this point. All the witches are stunned to discover that the road is not is even real. They're like, this is a real thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, except for Sharon, who is played by De- Deborah Jo Rupp, who is convinced that everyone has kidnapped her. She's still playing the card of, I'm in Westview. You just kidnapped me. I'm a housewife. But see, I don't think she's really a witch. Oh. I think she, I don't think, I don't think that she, I think all of that is real. That she is the green witch. And I don't really think her being the green witch is so much because she was planting flowers. It's more so because she's green and green is in. I, this is all new to her. She doesn't know what's going on because she didn't know the lyrics to the song. No, no. Uh, yeah. She's very green. It's, it's as if she's new to it and she didn't know it. She's a poet and she didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, uh, and that's why she is so green. That's why she would be the green witch. Yeah. It's like, I didn't know what the hell I was. I didn't know I was here. So they wrapped me up into it and in here. But obviously, she poses a, an obvious liability to them, obvious uh, without knowing her magical abilities, if there are any. So it's somebody that is still there. Now, mind you, the teen is very much aware of certain things and how things work, but he's still green himself, Mm -hmm. but he's also, I don't know if it's in, yeah, it definitely is in this episode and I'll bring it up just to spoil this a little bit, a little tinkle as it were, uh, when they had to drink the potions, remember? Mm -hmm. So she actually succumbed to it at a certain point. Which I think we get an answer for in episode four when they 
are arguing about because, what happened. Because she was not a virgin? No, because she had, remember, she drank two glasses, but she only had one drink of the potion. Yes. That reversed the signs. Oh, so it's because she drank twice? And I then- think it's because she drank twice, but they only gave her one, one drink of the whatever. What is it called? Oh, I forgot. Antidote. Um, so, yeah, I, I that's what I think. Uh, they mentioned that for a reason, and I think that's why she passed away. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> We're all spoiler here. What I are said you spoiler about? Ball. Um, but I like it. Uh, like you said, they pick up right where they left off, and, and they definitely alluding to the fact that it looks like each character – uh, is going to have to face some something uh, relating to their past. And we do get some more information on that as they go down the road. But I loved as they're walking towards what the house that they find of Catherine Hahn pretty much mostly walks that walk and acts without saying a word. It's all in facial expressions or movements. As everybody else is talking. Yeah. Yes. And I I just, I just I rewound that several times because I was like, that is absolute acting genius. I thought that was so. She's reacting to their acting is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, but she's without saying a word, you know, every single thing she's thinking and feeling at those moments in relation to what these Ladies are babbling on about. She's trying to feel through them is what it is as a coven, I think, and who she could trust, who she can't trust and try to figure out what makes them tick to make it work for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How can she's she trying benefit? to lead this coven. Um, there's also a lot of, uh, we, we already spoke about the drinking thing and everything else. There's an eat me, drink me thing. Now that's not a perverted. Yeah, I'm gonna need an explanation. Thing. Where's this going? <laughs> it's a Lewis Carroll thing from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, I'm thinking Willy Wonka. No, well, that's also part of it too. But with well, Lewis Carroll, it's like uh, drink me, you shrink; eat me, you grow. I was in Wizard of Oz, or Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Sorry, okay, Lewis Carroll. <laughs> Sorry, backwards thinking, dyslexia. I got you. I got you. Yep, she corrected me. Everybody, thank you, thank you, Becky. <laughs> uh, no, I had one thing mo- thought in my head, and another thing in my head as well, and they just like intersected. They merged. They merged. <laughs> but yeah, it's a Lewis Carroll thing from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the eat me, drink me thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, uh, I think they pose that in the same aspect as like with the caterpillar within that, you're smoking a weed. Mm-hmm. Is there the false information, which also, which makes me think of Vidal because we get Vidal at a certain point too in on the road as well. The Mad Hatter. Yep. Hey, and- I see where you're going. So there's there's a lot of nuances within this within uh, story time references. Uh, I don't know if there's a big bad wolf, and maybe Agatha is that. <laughs> Who knows? <Yeah. laughs> she but, she might be the big bad wolf, the wizard. Um, yeah, ignore the person behind the curtain. Yeah. Uh, no, that's me, everybody. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you uh, you you do grant wishes, so no, I don't. <laughs> you granted mine. I'm sitting here right now. <laughs> well, that doesn't take that much. <laughs> yeah. I, I just said I was easy, everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, back to the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the fact is, is that she leads these people onto their thing, and. Uh, it's like she's trying to manipulate the coven as she's going to get Mm -hmm. what she wants, but she's not being very entirely honest about it. Nor is she she participating. Like she's not, not she's trying not to actively participate with their banter between each other in between break times. 
And it, you could tell she's purposely doing this. And you're like, what's her ploy? What's her reasoning? Well, her reasoning is to get to the end of the witch's road to get all her power and regain where she was. And she doesn't want to be close to these people. She just wants to get what she needs from them and yeah, move on. It's like the usual suspects. The movie, oh, the usual a great su- movie. She's is she Kaiser Sose. I don't know. <laughs> she Kaiser Sose. Some I don't know, man. She starts <laughs> walking around. You know, she's not walking with a limp, and she's gonna start walking normal. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I do like that uh, when they enter the house and their clothing changes, uh, that whole, the house, the clothes gave me Big Little Lies. I don't know if Big Little Lies or, um, oh, darn it. What's that movie that came out in the 70s and 80s uh, with the women that lived in a commune and it's all families? The Stepford uh, Wives? Yes. Gave me that vibes yeah. a little bit. They did a remake with it with Nicole Kidman, which is pretty funny, too. You know, she goes to my church. I have given her communion. Who? Nicole Kidman. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Damn. And she's married to a country singer, I believe. Keith Urban. He's seen yeah. him, too. Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, cool. She knows celebrities, everybody. <laughs> I'm fancy. She's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All no, right. It's, it's good. I didn't think about Stepford Wives, too. Yeah, that's what I thought about right away. Because it, it looked like they were that typical stylistic, uh, urban. Preppy, proper. Proper yeah. way of living, you know. But, uh, yeah, the first thing that came to my mind was, like, because Nicole Kidman played, her, played that character, too. Um, but. Yeah, it's so strange. And it's just like, okay. And then that's when they got to the point of drinking the potion. And especially with their face. <laughs> oh, my gosh. When they panned around to. And the fact that, that like, Agnes herself at the very end did not drink it. And she had to drink it. Because yeah, it had to be it, But you notice that it wasn't until. Mm-hmm. Teen went to grab the glass and say, here, I'll do it. That yes. she took it because she cares about that boy. She yes. doesn't want anybody to know it, but it was not until then did yes. she decide, okay, fine, I'll participate. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. She was trying to be sneaky and cover her face with her hair so that they wouldn't know that she didn't drink it and then the you know of course she got busted uh, (laughs) and had no choice but it's again it's her just being selfish it is it is but she kind of and then she and it was a realization that all of them had to drink it except the kid Mm -hmm. and uh it said something in the spell or information that they got that you couldn't be a virgin or whatever, who else would have been would be him. Yeah, they needed the blood of someone who was not tainted or something yeah, of that nature. Yeah, the, the wine, the poison. Correct. And then that's how they were. I loved how the wine just automatically filled up and I'm yeah, like, well, we got more was... of it. <laughs> yeah, like, can I get one of those, please? Uh... <laughs> that's why Sharon grabbed another drink. Yeah, she was like, I'm over this. Give me that. She's a typical um, stuff for wives. So I'm going to drink more. Yeah. So. <laughs> if you're living in that situation, I'd, I'd probably constantly be drunk. Damn. I liked everyone's, uh, you know, the side effects to clarify what we're talking about. They had mm-hmm. to drink the wine. The first effect was their faces. Uh, sw- looked wow. It looked like the elephant man. <laughs> I, golly, that was shocking when the camera panned around. Um, and then that went away. They thought they were cured, but Jen, using her uh talents, realized that what it what it was, mm-hmm. and that the next thing would be hallucinations, and then eventually death. And so, if you don't mind, I wrote down each person's 
hallucination. Right. Um, Alice sees her mom and her mom freaking out about not being able to save her, which to me shows, okay, this curse that Alice has talked about is real. Uh, Lilia, I, she saw a girl dressed in uh, old timey clothes and then she gets, gets to the table and it was all dead people, right? I'm a little confused about that. Yeah, it looked like a lot of old dead people to me. And then she comes out screaming, they're all dead. So I'm very curious about that. Uh, Jen has the doctor who was insulting her. uh, And I wrote down here, is that who bound her power? I think he might be the guy who took it for her to be him to be such an important part of her hallucination. And then, of course, right before they drink the potion, Agatha hears the baby crying. She goes to pull back the blanket on the cradle and it's a book. It's the dark hold, not the baby. Yep. Cause that's what they all wanted to get out of there. The dark hold is like the, uh, if, if you watch Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness, you saw, you saw how it drove Wanda mad and how crazy she was. Meaning that in this universe or in this reality at this point, the dark hold is still a presence. We already knew that there are other dark holds in other universes. Maybe this is a different presence or the underside, or maybe it's Mephisto. And I've been wanting. Mephisto for so long. And I think that's where Vidal comes from. But that's you're going to you're gonna have to give me more info on that in the comic books because that, that's. Oh, we'll get into that. Um, uh, because, like I said, the Darkhold was supposedly destroyed in uh, 616. Technically, we're in 616. But they went to. The Witch's Road. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's a different reality. Yeah, I forget that with Marvel and Doctor Strange and mm-hmm. uh the the end game and all of that, that I forget that there are so many different realities, which means that I think there is a solid chance that you will see Wanda, Wanda. back. Yeah. Which they would could, be cool. They could resurrect Wanda. We already knew that there was another Wanda and another reality with her two sons. She goes back to that. That other Wanda is there. And she is... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get this wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I gotta. I have to look it up. Just So bear with me, everybody. I forgot what Wanda Maximoff is, and it's a specific term. <clears throat> and my friend Rob from Comics Explained will probably be like, uh, what is it? Oh, a nexus being. The nexus. That makes me think of Charmed. No, no, it's a nexus being in the Marvel cinematic universe or the Marvel comics and the nexus being is literally, I had to think about it and it just like popped in my head. Uh, basically a nexus being is somebody is extremely powerful. Uh, and to describe this to you, comic book readers, if you read the original secret wars, who was a nexus being who could destroy anything? Uh, the absorbing, uh, not the absorbing man, geez, the molecule man himself who destroyed the beyonder and everything that was going on in the original secret wars. Uh, he could create everything out of molecules. Wanda was one of those people that was able to do that. She could twist reality twist. It's like worse than what, uh, Thanos could do with, the gauntlet, the infinity gauntlet. 
with all the gems. Literally, she could twist and destroy everything. Um, I think they listed Professor X as one of those people on a higher being cloud. Uh, there's somebody else as well. I'm forgetting who. But I'm sure you comic book readers are like, you're getting it all wrong, Mark. We're going to tell you right. If you do, please send them in the tell comments. Tell us in the feedback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's a nexus being, meaning that they're extremely, extremely powerful. And, uh, yeah, and for the fact that, you know, she could come back at any time, yeah. if anything. Uh, and regardless of how many versions of their, they're still, and then she could still come back. Uh, that's why she was so powerful against herself in the Multiverse of Madness. She was able to take ho- over her own self, a version of herself, and they were able to battle it out at one point. Uh, there's more to know to later on with uh, Doctor Strange. Who knows? <laughs> if you guys watched that, if you remembered it, we were left on a cliffhanger again. <laughs> Not Marvel. Not um, Marvel. Uh, so they, Jen, they go through and they find all of the things that Jen needs for the um potion mm-hmm. and i thought it was hilarious that uh she needed a way to boil the water and he goes and gets a sous vide um if you don't have a sous vide i highly recommend it it's yeah. a phenomenal way to cook food um and then it they go back and forth about the color is that green is that blue um which is in representation of the witches themselves and who they are yes that was cool. Uh, and then they get it right. They go to drink it, but the timer doesn't stop. And then they realize Mrs. Hart is passed out on the couch. So they just in the nick of time get her the potion. And then the stove opens and they make their exit. And uh, one <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing about that, right? Because uh, she got stuck. Hansel and Gretel. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's I... where Lilia says I had a friend who did that once or something. It didn't end well for her. Oh my gosh. Yes, everybody. I'm ashamed I missed that. So I'm I'm trying to point out the obvious to Becky, but these are the little things that I picked up because Grimm's fairy tales at times get really grim. That's so good. But That's... Uh, the before that happened, uh, Sharon was experiencing a scary hallucination, screaming for Wanda to spare her life her or husband's someone, life. her husband's life before she faints, before she actually dies. And then we realize she's dead. She a dead. Yep. And then they're like, oh, crap. And then they have to go through the oven because it's their only exit point at that point. It's yeah. kind of like an escape room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they literally. <laughs> Before they could escape, somebody had to die. <laughs> yeah, I, that was that. Do you know the her saying "Let him breathe" and her hallucination was back? Actually, references WandaVision mm-hmm. where they were having dinner and her husband was choking on yes, the food at the dinner at yeah. night when Wanda and Vision were there, and he goes, "Oh, that it's like, ha 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 ha, breathe, ha ha ha," and it was like a loop. Yeah. It was like a loop that Wanda had put them in, like a hiccup. So it means that the spell is still there. Yeah, it's when she sees her hallucination. Yes. Uh, I do have one quote for this. Um, Mm -hmm. I liked it. Again, I know it was self-serving, but I did like Agatha grabbing Jen and shaking her and being like, you can do this. And uh, her... (laughs) Her quote unquote pep talk, uh, I've always hated you. And then Jen replies, if this is a pep talk, <laughs> she goes on to talk about how she can she can do this. I that thought that was a very funny exchange. And then my last note is not Mrs. Hart. Is she really dead? Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's all I have for episode three. How about you? That's all I had to. Um, yeah, just not that we were trying to do blow by blow scenes that happen, everybody, but it's interesting to, to get the perspective mm-hmm. of what we see within it. And I, I think that's what I, I was trying to give with the Lewis Carroll uh, sections, as well as the Wizard of Oz, as well as, uh, you know, Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> Just yeah, to throw that, that was, in there. Oh, I'm so mad at myself for not <laughs> getting that one. Um, so that was the water trial. Episode four is the fire trial, which I think was very Alice focused around Alice, but a lot of things happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so we start off where we left off. Yeah. And they're on the morning, road. All but uh, Agatha are mourning uh, Mrs. Hart. And she's just so cold sometimes. She's so, she's like, and okay, rest in peace, Mrs. Hart. And then and, she just starts walking and nobody is coming with her. Yeah. Moving and, on. Yeah, she keeps coming back like, okay, let's go. What's what what's the problem? And it's like somebody's dead. Yeah. Yeah, the the question is, it's like, you know, as as Teen laid uh some uh baby's breath on Mrs. Hart's grave, Lydia yeah. questions how much antidote Mrs. Hart got because she had the two glasses of wine. Mm-hmm. And that's the question of the day, and they didn't realize it. Uh, Agatha tries to move on down the road after a half-hearted rest of peace, like you said, Mrs. Right. Hart. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the cover refuses to leave. Agatha calls Sharon a bad draft pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it tries to taunt the others with a more powerful rest of us. Uh, Jen and Agatha debate certain lyrics to the Ballad of the Witch's Road. Coven 2 versus Coven True. Yeah. And Alice asks Agatha how many other witches left the road with her last name. She was on it. One. one. And Agatha holds up one finger, signaling while she is, uh, while she thinks it's Coven Two. Alice is consulted about the meaning of the line, as her mother wrote the most popular version of the ballad. Now, because we know that Alice's mother was lost on the road. Obviously, um, yeah, and then Alice and Jen and Lot Lilia don't want to go forward without a green witch to complete the coven and replace Mrs. Hart. Agatha d- debates, uh, uh, in my notes saying summoning a substitute for the road. Teen provides a spell book for the process, so mm-hmm. out of the blue, this kid <laughs> he gets he's got spell. his notebook full of them. Yeah, each coven member establishes some sort of criteria. Uh, Lily is, yeah, <laughs> Lily is asking that she be strong, good at her craft. Agatha that she not be annoying and not super political. Yeah, <laughs> and then Jen she be pleasant looking, and Alice that she bring Advil. <laughs> like <you said. laughs> those are great because it started off. Lily is was so honest and sincere and good and the rest of them are oh that was not annoying and not political but out of the blue we got rio vidal which was a, a twist i did not i thought mrs hart was coming back i didn't know that it was going to be the version of mrs hart that went in the ground much like pet cemetery <laughs> uh, but uh when she snapped back together and it was Rio. I was like, ah, way to go. Uh, that was a very nice twist. And she automatically added so much to the episode. So I'm very glad they chose to, to bring her back. Well, it's Vidal. So I'm still a little, you replaced one with another. But we've seen this person before. Mm-hmm. So it makes me think there's evil ways. Uh, I, I have like Black Sabbath stuck in my head. Evil women, don't you play your games with me? <laughs> or Dio. Evil woman! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> oh yeah, is that the... 
Anyway, <laughs> I know, I'm I not going to sing. No, uh, no singing for me that. either. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you're replacing one for the other. And her coming back as this, it's like, hold on. She's very familiar to us. We already know her. Mm-hmm. But wait a minute. Is she really the replacement? What's going on here? I, there's something twisted going on. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, everybody. Yeah. Um, so they all head to the house. And I thought it was, you, you could tell it was going to be Alice's trial because she, the look on her face as soon as she saw that house. Yes. She, she was like, I don't want to go. And then. It's as if she knew it before and didn't want to go there. It's like a reflection of her past or a memory that they have to. And it's like one of those things like where you're in a movie and you have to relive all your darkest history or fears. And it seems like that's what the witch's road is looking to do is to bring up old past to see how you you face your demons. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, ooh, here we go. Who's going to suffer at this point? Who's going to have to play the drums yeah. <laughs> until they explode like yeah. a Spinal Tap drummer? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. No, that was good. Um, I love when they enter the house. It's become, it's only happened in two episodes, but it's become one of my favorite things to see is what they're going to be dressed like. And Catherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza were smoking hot. Uh, oh, in their so outfits. much cleavage. Oh my God. Was, <laughs> they looked, but it was like, I don't know. It was classy hot. Um, they it gave was. me their, that whole vibe gave me a lot of Daisy Jones in the six. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It was definitely the seventies vibe. And you got yeah. that, especially with the glasses. glasses yeah. 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 And, uh, and what was it? Alice. Yeah. Knew what it was. So it was that whole seventies vibe, but this is what I liked about the episode. <clears throat> the, um, it's literally like they're in a recording studio in the seventies. <laughs> I've worked with a lot of that equipment, everybody. They drug Is it up. accurate? Uh, semi-accurate. That's, I would say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of it, I'm like, oh, my God. I remember working on a console like that. Oh. <laughs> That's really cool. But, yeah, it's interesting. But um, uh, what did I get out of this? Okay, this is a quote. It's like, we are an album cover waiting to happen. <laughs> That's what Teen says. And he's not far off, pretty much. Uh, it's the six of them that look like a witchy Daisy Jones in six or, uh, uh, yeah, Daisy Jones in the six. Like, yeah. Uh, you were thinking of, or Fleetwood Mac. Ah, oh, very. That's good. That's a good one. And and I love how Teen then searches for a hint as to what awaits them in the next trial, like the card that was on the mantle of the beach house in episode three that they actually got. So at least they they were listed. It's like a clue or like I said before, everybody. An escape room. (laughs) (laughs) This is that's what they should have called this. Agatha and the escape room. Pretty much. Um, but it was cool that the the music started playing and that it played backwards, which is a very you know seventies thing or seventies satanic. Thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, more eighties, I guess. Cause, yeah, it was more like Judas Priest and how they used to do with the uh, Judas Priest and Ozzy Osbourne records and play them backwards, look for satanic messages. Now, mind you, they would Hotel screw up California. The, yeah, Hotel California too. But mind you, that's all just about heroin. <laughs> Literally, that's how it's discussed in college. <laughs> oh, I did take that. that course. That's interesting. You never knew that? No. Oh, wow. I had to do one in community college. I I went to St. John's University. I went there for two years. I went to trade school. And then before I left Staten Island to come up to Dutchess County, New York, I went for a year and a half to almost two years of uh, community college in Staten Island. And we had a whole class and we talked about like 
for like half a semester about the Hotel California and how it was all about heroin. That it was makes so all much about sense. about drug addiction. And that's literally what the the whole thing was. Uh, we also did something too, which was uh, Dark Side of Oz. If you play Dark Side of the Moon after the third war of the MGM line during um, The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. It plays in sequence as a music video in comparison to exactly how it do- is done lyrically. Yeah, I remember. I, I never tested that, but I do remember hearing oh, about you could that. Get, you could easily find it on YouTube and just watch it live. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what I would do. I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, and you don't have to trip out everybody. By the way, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I like the in there asking Teen how he figured out mm-hmm. what to do, and he just holds up the record sleeve and it says "Play Me." But I love the way they shot it from his perspective mm-hmm. to where it zooms in, and Alice is the focus. Alice, like in Alice in Wonderland, and instead of "Eat Me," it says "Play Me." Yeah. <laughs> You're loving this way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I have to point it out. It's too obvious. No, it's 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 you're killing. I just hate that. It's like I should have seen that. Why did I see that? But I like this because it it gives a uh, I like the added perspective. That's very cool. Um, I, I, one moment that made me laugh is. When they're the curse is flying around and going in and out, and they have she draws the circle to protect, and uh, Aubrey's just chilling on the couch while it's flying around. Rio, I keep calling her Aubrey, like, uh, but it seemed that it didn't affect her, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. She had to participate, but the the curse did not affect her in any way. Nope. That's why you noticed I, that too. I don't trust her. <laughs> uh, I like when they figure out what they need to do to get out, and you know, Alice is protesting, and Agatha's like, All signs point to a jam session. Yep, and then that's what they have to do. That was a great version of the ballad. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the, the music in it, I thought the way they actually were able to create it was interesting. Who had to play bass? Who had to play drums? Uh, Aubrey Plaza was playing drums. Agatha had to sing. Um, so Rio actually had to play drums. Uh, Agatha sang. Um, Alice, bass. Mm-hmm. Um, who was Lilia on? Lilia did the, what are they called? The chains? Chin. Triangle. Or the, yeah, there's there was a special name for him. Ah, oh, okay. What did Teen do? I forgot. Play guitar. He yes, yes, he played guitar. Okay, not to to like I had to go on memory on that one because I didn't write it down. Um, I thought it was very uh, sneaky of Agatha to get Rio in the sound booth and coax her into talking about what she really wants to do with these witches and pushes the button so Mm -hmm. that they hear that Rio's, yeah, they want, it's, she wants Rio to be the focus as the bad guy now, not herself. Mm -hmm. Um, And then she tries to make herself look good by saying, I'm not that kind of witch anymore. Um, (laughs) It was very sneaky. It was. But I I do, she says she wants the bodies. Is that something we're supposed to know? Or we'll think you, okay. I think that's something we will find out. Okay. I think for every witch that is consumed, whether it be Sharon or anybody else that succumbs on the witch's road adds up to a favor for of some reason and something that I already have in my head. Because how many episodes do we have left after this? this? We're on episode four. 
Is are there six or eight? I don't know. That's a good question because I have. I'm gonna not look that up. Like Let's you. look that up. Let's have fun. How many episodes there, Mister Google, of Agatha all the way? This is a good question. Not L.A. way. Nine. Okay, so we got another five more episodes. Nine episodes. So yes, that's Teen Agatha. Jen, when Do Jen had hers, Rio. Mm-hmm. Because Alice had hers, Jen had hers. Okay. So there's only three trials left then. And how many witches oh, Lilia, do we have? Lilia. So that's how many four. witches do we have left other than? Uh, Agatha, Teen, and Rio. Lilia, Alice, and Jen. Three more. Hmm. Three to well, go. Well, you gotta count Agatha. She's gotta. She's gotta be the main trial. She, she's gonna be the main trial, but I don't think Rio is part of it, and Teen is there along for the ride. The other three are. I, I hate saying it. It's almost like, um, oh my god, what's the name of that stupid Netflix show? The Korean one, which everybody loves, Squid Game. Squid Game. How they all narrow down? They just go away. Collateral damage. Yep, it becomes collateral damage until the one that's finally standing. Uh, kind of like um, Survivor, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's where it's going. But yeah, I like after they. I like the visuals of the demon. I thought the demon looked a little cheesy, but the curse. But I liked the visual when she. Alice really got into the song and the demon caught on fire. It almost looked like angel wings behind her. Uh, I thought that was a cool visual. Um, Hmm. I loved once they got out and the way Agatha was so, so concerned about team. You could tell She really cares about him. Um, And then the way she watched over him until he woke up. But then as soon as he woke up, she was back to her sarcastic self. (laughs) Yeah. So I just, I, I, and I think when they're, I love the scene of them around the fire talking about old uh, scars and speaking of third nipples where Rio's, Talking about how she's covered in them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they mention the scars and Rio talks about, I think she's referring to Agatha being her scar. And it makes me wonder what she had to do that she didn't want to do. And when she goes over to Agatha and they have that moment and she tells Agatha, he's that boy isn't yours. I don't believe her. I think she said that because it was getting too intense and she has to keep Agatha at arm's length because you're right. Uh, she's up to something. Mm-hmm. I think she did that to push her away. I don't think that that solidifies that teen is not her son. Yeah. I agree. That's why I keep still thinking Wiccan. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> That's all I have on that episode. That same same here. Uh it leaves us on that uh that little bit of a cliffhanger for our next one. <clears throat> the only thing I have as far as uh quotes as we get into, because I don't have any additional points. I have one for episode one, and that's uh Agent Vidal. Saying, if you want to be in control, you can be. So this alludes to what she finds out later and why she get incorporates herself into the show. That's good. (laughs) 
And then episode two, witchcraft. Emphasis on witchcraft. And that was from Joe Locke. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. And I already gave mine for uh, episode three from uh, Teen and stuff like that. What was it? Yeah, that was it. Say it again. Oh, from Teen? Oh, I have to go back. It's in my regular notes. I I incorporated it. (laughs) But you guys got it. My short term memory. I'll have to go back and listen because I've already forgotten. Yeah, same here. Um, that is that it? Yeah, that's it for me for uh, about quotes and everything else. Um, I have one note. It's just that I hope we get backstories for each member of the coven, like with this episode with Alice. Uh, it's a reveal that her mom was on the road performing and touring because she was using that that ballad kept. Alice safe. Uh, I love that. So I hope we get more tidbits of each one of them as we go along. Um, I have a few quotes. Nobody be surprised. Um, When Agatha is venting about Wanda, she took my power and left me with household appliances. And then when Agatha finds teen in the closet. She's like, so that arrest was maybe more of a kidnapping. Um, yeah. Agatha to teen when she's gets in her, uh, fake car. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we didn't talk about that. That was hilarious. Um, the house is yours. Random boy. Tell the vengeance seekers. I say hi. Uh, when Jen meets Agatha again, I haven't seen you since I really made a pointed effort not to. I'm going to use that. Um, <laughs> when Lilia tells Teen about the charge on his card, your bank statement will say Lilia's leggings, but that's just my side hustle. And uh, when Mrs. Hart, to Mrs. Hart ones, uh, when she gets stuck off the road and it's trying to take her purse and she says, this came from Talbot's. You can't have it. To all my ladies listening, Talbot's is a, uh, it's a fancier kind of like JC Penny and they sell clothing that caters to like people in their late fifties, early sixties. So it's right, right up Mrs. Hart's alley. And that, that was cute. And then when Mrs. Hart's talking about the, her getting old and she says, I would drink the blood of a virgin if it would smooth out these wrinkles. That's it. All right. Uh, I guess we can move into some Easter eggs. Yes. I'm excited for these. I already mentioned about Vidal, right? We talked about Vidal Rio, right? So, uh, Rio, I feel, is a liaison to what we know as the character Mephisto in comics. Now, we were promised this uh, (laughs) through Kevin Feige a long time ago that we will see Mephisto. Now, they weren't going to do this in cinematic form. They're doing it now in the show because the show could be not played in other countries that are against what we de- would be deemed as satanic or devil or anything like that. Uh, Mephisto was considered to be the uh, <clears throat> the devil of uh, Marvel Comics because they weren't allowed to use Satan because of the uh, Comics Code uh, authority that came out in the late 50s, early 60s, hmm. because it was uh, corrupting children to do evil deeds, like smoke marijuana and do all this weird stuff. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Or be uh, like against their parents or their teachers or whatnot. Anyhow, so uh, I think that Mephisto is manipulating Agatha in some way with Rio Vidal. Interesting. And, and this. And we already know that Sasha 
Baron Cohen is going to be Mephisto. If you remember who Sasha Baron Cohen is. Oh, yeah. So he's going to be playing Mephisto. And he was, we were told that he would show up within Agatha all along. Hmm. So uh, I think this uh, Rio Vidal is the impetus of the evil counterpart of Mephisto. It could be Mephisto himself as. So expect a Scooby Doo mask reveal at the end with Sasha Baron Cohen or him coming in and she's his sidekick. Hmm. So we have that. Um, I will talk about uh, the characters that we've had with, uh, within Agatha's coven within the show. So we had Lilia Calderu. So in the comic, so uh, of all witches uh, in Agatha's coven, Patty Lupone's Lilia, uh, Lilia Calderu has perhaps the most intriguing crime or uh, intriguing comic backstory, I should say. Uh, because her history is tra- uh, tr- pretty much tied to directly to the child of none other than Wanda Maximoff, the future Scarlet Witch. So in the comics. So created by Steve Englehart, Michael Friedrich, and Frank Brunner, Lilia first appeared in 1973's Marvel premiere number 12. So these are real characters within the comics that they're utilizing within the show. That's cool. So in Wanda Maximoff's uh, youth, Lilia was part of the coven that identified Wanda as being of great power in the comics. Lilia has an ongoing rivalry with Baron Mordo, the arch enemy of Doctor Strange. We all know that, everybody. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> who, once, uh, who once seduced her in an attempt to steal her family's magical tome, the Book of Calagastro, which I have never read, everybody. So, uh, though she managed to fend off them, one of them uh, to help her coven. So, basically, she was a part of the coven at one point. Uh, Jennifer Kale. Uh, so, Sashir so Zamata's uh, Jennifer Kale is the most storied of the members of Agatha's coven within the show, having adventured alongside numerous heroes in the Marvel uh, Universe including Doctor Strange, other versions of uh, powers, especially from Mephisto, Ghost Rider, everybody. Wow, can't wait for Ghost Rider to come out. X-Force, which is very odd, because that's more X-Men based, and especially the mysterious, and my favorite, Man-Thing, which was a uh, super soldier serum gone wrong which was their version of uh, Swamp Thing. Uh, she was first introduced in 1972's Fear Number 11 by Steve Gerber and Rich Buckler. Kale began her sorceress training as a teenager using magical implements possessed by her father, the head of a, dev- of a demonic cult. When she accidentally summoned a demon, she was saved by, of all people, Man-Thing, <laughs> going on to become a magical adventurer in her own right. Jennifer Kale also has a comic book relationship with Wanda Maximoff, with Kale's most recent comic appearance coming in 2023's Scarlet Witch number nine. So they're still printing out Scarlet Witch comics, everybody. So in which they teamed up at, with Kale's old ally, Man Thing, to repel a demonic invasion. So, you know, these are still going on in comics and the, uh, the actual magic world of um, of Marvel is still there, and I love it. Uh, there was a man thing one, uh, that came out years and years ago, which is so funny because he was an actor. Man thing as an actor, like a monster on set. It's funny. I'm googling that. <laughs> uh, you got Alice Wu Gulliver, who we know, right? So, as in Agatha all along, Alice Wu Gulliver is a cop who is the daughter of a magic user. I'm like, Allie Ann's MCU version of Alice, who is the daughter of a rock star, the comic version is the daughter of August Wu, the magical protector of Hong Kong. 
a police officer. Hey, they, that's probably where they got the idea for Agatha becoming a police officer in the beginning. Something uh, CSI or NCIS. Well, Alice Westview. was a cop. Yeah, but yeah, it was emphasized a little bit more. So we got that Westview NCIS episode in the very beginning. And uh, a protector of Hong Kong and a police officer named Adam Gulliver, also unlike the MCU, rather than disappearing in the witch's road, Alice's mother is killed by a demon. Which could be considered because the witch's road is demonic, <laughs> if you think about yeah. it. So Alice Will Gulliver appeared in 2016's Doctor Strange of the Last Days of Magic Number 1 by James Robinson and Mike Perkins. Following in her father's footsteps, Alice becomes a cop who uses magical abilities she inherited from her mother on the job. And like the other comic-based members of the Coven, Alice has teamed up with Wanda Maximoff, joining forces with Scarlet Witch to hunt down an ancient demonic sorcerer who empowers a mystical gang known as the Missing Sixes Triad. So we have that. Uh, another one <clears throat> to mention, I had this comic. I don't know where it is, hmm. but it is the vision and the Scarlet Witch number three, which came out in 1985. Uh, this was done by, uh, who was it? Uh, I know it's Jim Shooter. Trying to see who wrote it. But anyhow. I'm just reading and briefing through this from what I'm reading online. This is like a history of where the Seven had burned Agatha Harkness at the stake. And it shows it in the comic book form. So there's like a big splash page of burn, witch, burn, burn, witch, burn. And she's like, tied to the post and being burned at the stage. Uh. Yeah, they don't show it in depth. It's it's a comic. It's from 1985. I was 13 at the time, so obviously it wasn't so bad. <laughs> so, and so walking home from the battle with the West Coast Avengers against the Grim Reapers team, the Vision and Scarlet Witch find themselves facing off against the Coven. Uh, and it says in here, I know they are meant to be mystical adepts, but they come across as lame super villains because they do look kind of weird, demonic. Like one of them looks like the um, spiky looking guy from Buffy the Vampire Slayer from Homecoming. If you remember that episode. And a fishy yeah, I'm thinking guy. prom. That was the werewolves. No, I'm thinking homecoming when um, Cordy and and Buffy. Oh, that they're on the they're being hunted. Like Slayer ca- Fest. Yep, yep. Yeah, cabin in yeah, the yeah, woods, yeah. and you got yep. the spiky looking dudes. Mm-hmm. One of them looks like a spiky looking dude, and you got one that looks like a, a well, an ogre, but with fur. but yeah that they they try to make the coven look like that so that's what it looks like in comic book form but i like that each one is original to the comics yeah it's it's very different and i like the way that i actually did that so that that's what you get with the nut uh it says, uh from information i've gotten on agatha long four easter eggs All right, yeah. Yeah, a green witch shows up and they talk about here about uh, how Rhea Vidal shows up uh, and which brings them the mind uh, to mind Julie Garland's Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Like, yeah, yeah they have a witch come before you. 
And then uh, I'm just reading a bunch of stuff that I found that I that I referenced. So, uh, yeah, I already know about the play me thing, Satanic Panic. When the first when Teen first plays the record, it accidentally plays backwards, which causes booming demonic sounds to reverberate around the room. Curses them. A, a viewer later took to Twitter to share a reverse version of the scene, which highlights just how much Marvel creative uh, creatives polish their titles. Uh, oh, it's on here. I'm not going to play it, everybody. Why? <laughs> I have to share. Hold on. If you want me to share, I'll do that. Hold on. Let me share, everybody. And mind you, I did not create this. Uh, not audacity. And we're going to go into advanced. Let's see. I'm going to do this. Here we go. Let's play it. That's wild. <laughs> You're right. That's wild. So, yeah. Thank That's, you for playing that. Eh, well, I was like, okay, I guess I'm playing it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's all I had for um, Easter eggs and things of that nature. I thought, you know, give you guys a little bit of heads up for what's going on. That's very good. I I needed that. Thank you. But uh, feedback this time, obviously, we didn't get any from YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or um, any email itself. But, you know, people are busy and I get it. Plus, we're a little late. (laughs) <laughs> Anyhow, on to news. And this is <laughs> so uh panels to pixels news of what we cover normally and things that we like to talk about. Uh Hellboy the Crooked Man is out now on digital release. I guarantee you didn't realize that there was an actual Hellboy movie that came out again. I did not. It's a new one. It's not uh David Harbour. And it's not uh, Perlman, Ron Perlman. So, um, yeah, that's out if you want to look at it. I have not watched it yet. But if you do, please do not blame me for watching it if it's bad. Um, Venom Don't shoot th- the messenger. Exactly. I'm just letting you know it's out there. <laughs> uh, as well as Joker... Uh, what is it called? Folly do do. Folly do. Uh, I might be uh, like we probably butchered that. Yeah, we butchered it. <laughs> Anyhow, that's out. The Joker two movies out. Everybody. So I don't know if you I'm watched it. So excited! It's getting uh, hammered by Rotten Tomatoes and every every critic known to man. I myself, uh, Rebecca. And uh, Mr. Rob Moda will be back and we'll be covering our thoughts about the movie once we've actually watched it thoroughly through. And uh, we'll be honest. But uh, I don't know. Even if it's painful. Even if it's painful. Just very much similar to what Lyra and I will have to do with The Crow when we get that (laughs) to you. Anyhow. Up next. Venom 3. The Last Dance. It will be out October 24th. So, um, this is the last Venom movie that uh, Tom Hardy will be doing. So, apparently this sets up a lot. Uh, <clears throat> Null the Conqueror is supposed to be in it. Null, we know, is in charge of all the symbiotes where Venom comes from in his world. So, he's the big evil. We have not seen anything in a trailer or any footage of it. So look forward to it. 
and we hope you are too. Um, we have a little bit of ways away till we get to uh, Craven the Hunter, which comes out in December. But other than that, uh, let's get into where you could send feedback because we didn't get feedback this week. So if you'd like to send any feedback at all regarding any previous podcasts that we've done, things that we've covered before, please send them to <clears throat> panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's panels spelled out panels two spelled out T O pan uh, and pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You can write out your own texted thoughts. We'll read them on the podcast as always. If you feel like you want to record yourself, we all have these cool devices like phones, computers, everybody through the pandemic got microphones, headphones, everything else. You can record yourself, send it as an attachment, and you could be on the podcast as well. Or you could just go straight to our Facebook group page, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. I actually leave a, an image there for you to uh, send feedback with and what we're covering. Or you can just send it through Messenger and we'll just read it just the same. Same thing goes to our uh, Instagram, but we could be found on at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. We could also be heard on YouTube. So if you're listening to us here on YouTube or YouTube podcasts, you can just leave a comment and I'll still get it. And I can still put it in here in the notes and we can read it. It would be greatly appreciated. But uh, if there's a rating or review, which there always is on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do so. Five stars are really mm -hmm. appreciated and recommended. Uh, I always ask people to be honest. Uh, also, leave some comments and thoughts, too, within your uh, when you do your rating or review. But uh, other than that, where else can we be heard like you, Becky? I can be heard here on Panels to Pixels and also on Adrenaline Cinema. And yes, we also did put out recently Mayfair Witches, Season 1, spoiler review. It we was a whole it. season. We had a good time talking about it. And like always, you could hear me on Panels to Pixels here on this podcast, as always. And uh, you could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast as well. And uh, we look forward to bringing more and more of that stuff to you this October season. So if you want and you want to be part of the podcast, like I said, we all have these headphones, these microphones. Everybody has an access to a Zoom account or whatnot. Literally, all you have to do, if you want to be interested, we still have yet to cover Friday the 13th Part 5. I still have to do some sort of classic monsters, Universal Monsters movie. We've already done Creature from the Black Lagoon. We've already done The Wolfman. Uh, we still have yet to do Dracula. You know, we have to get Bella Lugosi's Dracula in there too. Yes. Or The Mummy, Karloff's Mummy. We have not done that. Or The Hunchback of Notre Dame or Phantom of the Opera. So those. Oh, I can play that on the piano. <laughs> I'm talking about the original black and white I know. silent movie, Lon Chaney Sr. Anyhow, uh, we're looking to do that so that way we could fill, fulfill our uh, October or uh, Shocktober or Backtober. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so to have fun with that, with uh, the spookiness that I do love and enjoy, unless you come up with your own original idea and want to say, Hey, Mark, you've never covered this. Let's do it. So let me know. Uh, all you have to do is email me at adrenaline cinema podcast at gmail.com. And then, uh, we could go from there. Um, with that, that's about it for this particular podcast and uh, we will be covering the next episode, which will be Agatha all along season one episode five, which I don't have the title for. I don't either. We're not prepared. We're not prepared. Everybody. <laughs> Anyhow, regardless, uh, we will be back next week and you will get a notification when that comes up too, as far as the picture and image in Facebook, Instagram, 
however. And uh, please leave the comments down below. Anyhow, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This is Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Spooky dreams. Ha, ha, ha.